Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I apologize a little bit <laughs> that the channel has been just so flooded with resins lately, but um, you know, today we're gonna shake things up a little bit. In this box is something, as you can see, <laughs> uh, is something entirely new to us, coming to us from Einscan. For those of you who are not familiar with what Einscan creates. Um, they're actually, their parent company is called Shining 3D. They tend to focus on high-end to mid-range 3D scanners, um, and this one is their mid-tier. Um, I say that because they have a model below this called the SE. We obviously have the SP, so this is higher up than that. And then they have another one that's specifically designed for scanning jewelry, which is uh, much, much higher. <laughs> so this one kind of falls in between the two. However, the jewelry one is a little bit different design. So that's why I hesitate in saying mid-tier. Either way, this is the mid-tier for the tabletop version. They have many handheld ones as well. Quick disclosure that this video has not been sponsored uh, by Shining 3D or any outside sources. So all of the opinions are our own. We have this scanner on loan to us from Shining for the next three months. Going to be able to play with it, show it off in some videos, and uh, we'll do this unboxing and definitely a full review nearer to the end of that three month period. Uh, moving on, this is not going to be a true unboxing as well. Uh, we've already been into the box and we've played around with it. And as well, this is their show model. So the box is a little beaten up and things weren't, you know, shiny and polished. We're not going to do any peel porn or anything like that. Um, it's seen plenty of use before. It still works great though. And uh, if you were to purchase one, certainly your unboxing experience would be much better. So let's actually open up the box and we'll show you what you would get with a scanner such as this. So for starters, we have on top a quick start guide, which is very handy, of course. It goes through different calibration methods. Um, that's what actually this plate is here. This is a, uh, I wanna say aluminum aluminum plate, either way it's a metal plate that has these markings on it. They're called targets. And this gets set up into this thingy, like so. And then this goes onto the tabletop scanner. It rotates and it gets properly calibrated and oriented to where things are on that bed. So this is a very important component. I'm not sure why it has to be metal, but you know, it, it is what it is. And you get this fancy little carrying bag and everything else is inside here. So this is the turntable itself. And just like on the calibration thing, it has these targets, which help the software when it's scanning on the turntable to be able to orient itself properly and um, make sure that everything is you know, located well. Because you don't want to just do a scan and then have like no feature target. It, it just kind of, if you did it a second scan without those targets, it would be off doing something else. You wouldn't be able to align them properly. So there's the turntable. We have this, which is actually the holder for the scanner. We'll get to that in a second. We've got a bunch of cords. This is a USB to USB mail with a right angle thing. This is just nice because it it's a desktop thing. We want it to uh, be all nice and clean on the desktop. And we have what the turntable lives on. This fancy piece of plastic, frankly. It's not the most stable thing, but given that it's supposed to uh, just sit on the tabletop, it's not really gonna flex too much. You won't be holding it around, flopping around like that. Basically, this goes here, and then there's a pill shaped thing on the bottom that aligns everything so it's all the same every single time. This cord actually runs through the bottom. I'm not sure if you saw that on the bottom of this thing there's like a rail so that everything sits nice and flush. And then we have the thing that's doing almost all the work which is the scanner itself. Let me just uh... then we have the scanner itself and this is gets clipped on right here, like so. And this then gets attached right there. So this is the full setup and it's actually quite nice. It's not pre-calibrated, that's not the word I would use, but it's definitely set up well in that, you know, the height is 
perfect. The angle at which it views the turntable is perfect. There's really no adjustability. Um, I imagine that's because they want to be able to, you know, just have a, a certain box in which you can scan. And I believe that maximum scan size with this particular model on the turntable is 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters. So I don't know what that is just off the top of my head, but probably a cube, you know, about that big, you know, head size, give or take. I have a big head, so maybe not my head. So the EinScan SP is definitely one of the most capable tabletop 3D scanners, at least on paper. So far, we haven't had a great deal of time to test it at a price that I'm pretty sure most of our viewers are going to say is too much. Uh, this unit costs 2,500 USD. But honestly, when you compare the capability of this machine next to some of the other cheaper options, there is really no contest in terms of the capability of this setup. And when you compare it to some of the other scanners, uh, not just those available at Shining 3D, but many others, the step up from this is called the AutoScan Sparkle, and that goes for about $14,000. And then there's their highest end HX handheld one, which starts at $10,000. So comparatively, this is a bargain. And just something else, uh, before I actually reached out to this company, because I wasn't really sure that they'd actually take me seriously, um, I reached out to virtually all of the consumer targeted 3D scanners available on the market, and I was outright turned down by all of them. Because when I told them what I wanted to do with the scanner, they just simply said our scanner won't do it, and uh, they won't even bother sending it. They know it's not going to live up to the performance that I was trying to get out of it. So what exactly do I want to do that you know, excludes so many of those other scanners? Well, obviously this channel is more geared towards jewelry manufacturing, which is certainly going to be on my radar. But I also wanna try doing some of the more industrial and artistic applications uh, that the scanner opens up to. Things such as scanning organic material, um, you know, say I wanted to incorporate a branch or you know, get some kind of nice texture going, I can scan it, miniaturize it, and incorporate it into my work. I also wanna be able to digitize some of my work. Uh, I mean, most of this stuff came from a 3D model, but something like this whale, for example, could have been carved in wax. And um, you know, this is the perfect size object to be scanned by this scanner. And also I wanna do some reverse engineering, but not in like a malicious way, more like uh, I want accurate positioning of say holes and dimensions of parts so that I won't have to go in with calipers and a ruler and reconstruct the entire thing from scratch. I'll at least have a baseline, if not given the specs of this thing, an actual model that I can just work with from there. So this scanner is accurate to 0.05 millimeter or 50 microns, which blows away virtually all of the competition uh, in that more budget tier. And honestly, when you look at some of the higher end ones, they can get up to like 0 0.3, 0 0.45 millimeter accuracy. So this is really not all that far off. Some of those more budget grade ones, they were accurate to maybe 0 0.1 millimeter. I did not see, actually I only saw one that could compare to this, but the vast majority were 0 0.1 all the way up to like 0 0.5 millimeter accuracy. 3D scans, if you've, if you've ever seen any of the raw data that comes off of these, um, they're not really all that pretty. They require some post-processing work and you can just imagine how much worse those would be the lower the resolution, the scanning resolution of the machine can produce. So in this current configuration, the SP with the turntable can virtually scan fully automated. Uh, as I mentioned before, at a 200 by 200 by 200 <laughs> uh, millimeter cube, basically within its field of view. However, it can also go onto this tripod and you can increase the size that you can scan considerably. So the scanner actually comes with this little tripod. You can extend the legs. Uh, you can take this guy off and attach that up here. And what this does when you have in conjunction with other computer settings, you can increase the total scan dimension from that 200 millimeters cube to 
1200 millimeter cubed, so 1200 by 1200 by 1200, which is pretty huge. This dimension is actually pretty large for virtually any tabletop scanner. I did not see any that could match this. And I feel like that feature is going to be incredibly useful for us and for honestly any of you viewers out there. Because, I mean, if you're just buying the jewelry one, that's pretty much all you can do. And I guarantee this piece of jewelry, as many of you may see, is not very small. Jewelry is a lot smaller than this typically. Um, you would not be able to throw this on the Autoscan Sparkle, for example. This would be probably your only option to get a top tier scan of this object. So if you're not really sure about what exactly you'll be scanning with a 3D scanner, you probably want to get something in the mid-range. A, table, a tabletop one could be very limiting, and a handheld one could be total overkill. If you're trying to scan something, let's say like this tripod size, this won't fit on the bed, but as soon as you were to you know, set it up appropriately, you could scan larger things pretty easily. So let's pack this back up and let's go back home where my computer and 3D printers live and we'll get started using this thing because I wanna see just how easy and how much the paper specs compare to the real world scanning capability. So this has been our first look and a uh, semi unboxing of the Einscan SP Platinum 3D Scanner. And um, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the entire review. So if you're at all interested in 3D scanning, 3D printing, jewelry making, and this whole kind of digital field that things are entering in towards, uh, don't feel like you can't reach out and ask for some help if you get stuck. Uh, comment section below, our socials, uh, we do a lot of, you know, resin reviews and things, so we can help out with virtually every step of the process. If you need more, you know, one-on-one -on -one help, like fixing up your studio or need recommendations for uh, how to set up things to buy, check out our website where we have a list of recommended products with all of our uh, affiliate links and things like that. Great way to help support this channel. And you can also consider our membership program where you have access to me on a more one-on-one -on -one basis through our Discord channel. We can set up a call, you can you know, show me some of your work, and we can diagnose and help get you guys back on the track, the right track. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.